Welcome everyone. My name is Guy Edwards and I am a UK and European patent attorney here at GJE. This first of three talks covering the funding of research and development or innovation with a particular focus on the support available from governments, especially the UK government. We here at GJE know that securing and prioritizing funding for research and development can be a struggle for many businesses, especially in the current global situation. As IP advisors, we deal with plenty of clients that are facing exactly the same challenges you and your company might be. And as such, we have a great amount of visibility and, uh, of these issues and are capable of signposting you towards some valuable resources that we feel can really help your business grow. So these three talks, um, we'll be talking about why governments support innovation and both the indirect and direct ways that governments and especially the UK government support businesses and that are innovating. So yes, this first talk is about why the government should encourage innovation. And one key reason governments support innovation is that social rates of return on research and development are greater than private rates of return. And what do I mean by this? The benefit society receives from innovation, from research and development is greater than the benefit that a company that is innovating receives itself. And, and when you think about that, you'll ask yourself, why is that? And, and one of the reasons why we as society benefit from innovation more than a, an individual company is that innovation spurs competition. When company A comes up with a, a new product, a new, new development, all its competitors have got to, to jump to it and, and create uh, competing inventions, competing innovation, or they've got to lower their prices. And so we sitting here as a society as a whole benefit from innovation, not just because one company becomes, creates an improvement, but because the whole industry is driven forward by improvement at any one company. Secondly, another reason why uh, the rates of return for society is better than for an individual company is that dead ends are positive for us all as a society. Um, as a community, it doesn't matter to us if a, if a company invests poorly in its research and development, so long as improvements are made across the industry as a whole. An area where we can see this in action at the moment is the development of vaccines for the coronavirus. Currently, there are only over 170 different vaccine studies in the works, and not all of these are going to be successful at producing a, a vaccine for the coronavirus. In fact, only a single, single figures, single number of uh, low numbers of vaccines all come through. And for the individual companies involved, this obviously is extremely risky. Two, three, four companies that do come up with viable vaccines are going to make a lot of money. But all the others who invested lots of money into their, into their research and development are going to come away with nothing apart from the need to foot the bill. But as a society, as a community as a whole, we don't care about those companies that have, have gone down the wrong, wrong rabbit hole. We just want to see this these vaccines come through and support us and allow us to, to return to normal life. And so there you can see it's clear that, that dead ends, these, the vaccines that don't work, are less important for society than for the companies involved. And so what does this mean when we say the social rates of return on R&D are greater than private rates of return? Well, firstly, it means that private industry invests less in research and development than we as a society would like. We would like it if industry and companies invested more in R&D. Hence, we want to support it. And further and beyond that, government support for innovative businesses helps everyone, helps everyone across, the, across society, helps the community as a whole, not just the specific business that might be receiving support or, or, or uh, financial aid from the government. Therefore, I think you can clearly see that government investment innovation offers real positive steps. Of course, there are plenty of other benefits to the UK. These include helping business, British businesses complete on the global stage. And what I mean by that is obviously in the, in the backdrop of Brexit, there's a lot of uncertainty about how, what our international position is in the world. If the UK government can support British businesses. We can compete globally. Equally, on a converse or, or reverse of that, Government support for innovation draws funding into the UK. Here in the UK, we've got a fantastic heritage of, of 
engineering and science. And as a result, we, we see at the moment plenty of innovation from outside companies. Investment in innovative companies, supportive science parks, supportive of, of programs that, that bring innovation into our universities and research parks will help draw innovation into the UK. Finally, um, supporting innovation really helps the UK government achieve its social and environmental goals. Targeted schemes can help the UK government and governments worldwide to reach goals that they set themselves, whether it be by emissions or, or green energy uh, or, or achieving social, social issues that they're combating on a day-to-day -day basis. And so in summary, at the end of this video, um, there are, I'm sure you'll appreciate that there are significant benefits to supporting innovation, both in the UK and beyond. And in our next two videos in this series, we'll be looking at just how governments do this. So stay tuned and make sure to give us a like and a subscribe or get in touch if you've got any other questions.